So these are our school counselors at Clayton Valley. Um, they are separated by your student's last name in alpha. So we have Ms. Rush, we have Mr. Lafiti, Ms. Coleman, Ms. Rogato, Ms. Gonzalez, Ms. Bonet, and myself, Ms. Garcia. Um, Ms. Rush currently has, um, she's currently out and she has a sub, Ms. Snyder. We also have, oh, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Um, we also have two college and career counselors, myself and Ms. Gonzalez. And um, we help students navigate Naviance, um, talk about trends in the college admissions. We also set up visits um, with college reps and career reps on campus. We also update students on upcoming college events, scholarship information, financial aid workshops, and SAT and ACT information. Um, we also have an Instagram, cvchs.ccc, um, for you to follow us for any upcoming information. And we also use the Remind app. So if you text at ccc-21, um, text 81010, um, you'll, rece you'll receive some reminders from um, the College and Career Center. We also have two marriage and family therapists on campus. We have Ms. Erica, who is here on Mondays and Tuesdays, and we have Ms. Manal, who's here on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, they help, they support students with emotional support, short-term counseling, teaching coping skills. They have groups on campus and also with crisis management. So as school counselors, we work with students in a variety of settings to provide information and support for, student, for college planning. So we have three domains. We have academics. So we review grades, um, course advisement, and targeted case management. We help with um, college and career. So we monitor students' progress towards their graduation and their college goals, and also with personal, social, and emotional. So helping with immediate personal concerns and also if they need any outside referrals. Um, how to reach your counselor. So your student um, is able to reach any one of us by walking in before school, during brunch, lunch, after school, and during office hours, which is now called ugly hour. Students can also email us, which is our preferred way to get decontacted, and they can also call and leave a voicemail. Um, so how can you as a parent um, help your child? So you can help by monitoring, monitoring their grades weekly on PowerSchool or Schoology. It can be overwhelming for students if, you were, if they're looking at their grades daily. So we definitely recommend weekly. Um, checking the Clayton Valley website and the newsletter weekly as well for information on homework help and other support activities. We encourage your student to make an appointment during the ugly hours. Again, this used to be called office hours last year. Um, it is now embedded into the bell schedule on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And students can make these appointments through the Flex Time app. Um, this is also a very important skill because they will be using it in college as well. Um, also helping your student to consider their options when facing with difficulties. So avoiding solving the problems for them. This is a time when students should be experiencing failure and learning to move forward. Um, on the Clayton Valley Charter website, um, you can find our calendar with events such as testing, athletic activities, school-wide events. Um, we also have a weekly newsletter that comes out every Tuesday. We also have our counseling page, which this presentation will be posted on, and also an athletics page. If your student is struggling in class or with their homework, we definitely advise number one is to talk to their teacher. Number two, again, make an appointment with their teacher during their ugly hours through the flex time. And number three, to attend homework help in the library, which is actually starting next week on October 17th. Um, it is Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 4.30. And also to check Power School and Schoology weekly. So we're gonna go into talking a little about um, graduation requirements. So at Clayton Valley, a student needs 230 credits to graduate. Each, each class is worth um, five credits a semester. So for English, they will be earning 40 credits, which is equivalent to the four years. 
Um, for world history during 10th grade, they will be earning 10 credits. U.S. history in 11th grade, 10 credits. Government and econ are both worth five credits during their senior year, because it's um, one semester in the spring, one or fall, one semester in the spring. They need 30 credits of the science, um, 30 credits of math, 20 credits of a foreign language, 10 credits of a fine art, 20 credits of physical education, 10 credits of a college prep elective, and 40 credits of elective credit. And that's gonna total to the 230 credits. For the CSUs and the UC college entrance requirements, which are also known as the A through G requirements, um, they need for history and social sciences, students need two years. For English, they need four years. For math, they need three years, but four years is highly recommended. For science, they need two years of a lab science, but three years is highly recommended. For a language other than English, they need two years of the same language, three is highly recommended. For their visual and performing arts, they need one year. For their college, and for their college prep elective, they need one year. And for test requirements, um, UCs and CSUs are no longer using the SATs or the ACTs. So the key differences between the high school graduation um, requirements and the college entrance, so the A through Gs. In high school, students are required to have two years of PE for graduation. They do need three years of math for graduation and they now need two years of a world language. So the same language for two years. For the college entrance, so the A through Gs, they do need math. It must include geometry, algebra two or higher. Um, for the world language, they want two years or up to level two. And then for testing, SATs or ACTs um, may actually be required, but for private or out-of-state schools. And colleges also want students to demonstrate college readiness and multiple measures. To stay on track to graduate, so students need to earn um, an A, B, or C grade. The class must be passed with a C or higher at the end of the semester to earn credit. So students should be earning 30 credits per semester. If a student is not passing their classes, there is the option for credit recovery. The three options that we have at Clayton Valley are um, online. So doing credit recovery through Ingenuity, um, taking the class through community college or at some um, through summer school. So if your student is hoping to apply to a four-year college, but they have a D um, in an A through G course, so they must repeat the academic course um, to be able to meet the A through G requirement. And it can also possibly raise their GPA. And we wanna make sure that all of this is done before their senior year, because once they're a senior and they're applying, um, the grades from where they're a freshman to a junior are the ones that are gonna be the, in the transcript sent to the colleges. So if you have any questions, if your student you know, has a D and needs to make up any credits, please have them see their counselor as soon as possible. For the AP, so the Advanced Placement and Honor courses, um, students may take as many AP and Honors courses as they wish. However, the UCs and the CSUs actually limit the number of Honors points that are granted to a student. So they're only looking at four courses, which is equivalent to eight semesters, and only two courses, four semesters from 10th grade. So we always like to remind students that it's quality over quantity. If your student is wanting to be a college bound student athlete, um, listen up. <laughs> so for they need to register for the NCAA um, as soon as possible. So before the end of their junior year, they need to be signed up. Um, they need to be registered in the NCAA eligibility, eligibility center um, website. They need to complete a total of 16 core courses in English, math, science, social science, and their foreign language. And 10 of those 16 core courses must be done prior to their senior year. Um, so they need to earn a 2.3 GPA for division one and a 2.2 GPA for division two in those 16 courses. Um, for the NCAA, SATs and ACT scores have been suspended for the 2023-2024 school year. 
So not all courses are approved for NCAA. So it's really important for your student to work with their school counselor, especially if they have taken online courses in the past. And if they do need to repeat a class, please have them contact their counselor so we can find those options for them. So now we're gonna go into a little bit of college. I believe Ms. Gonzalez is going to take over. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Gonzalez. Thank you for joining us today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about college. Miss, oh, thank you. Um, so for California Systems of Education, there are four-year universities and community college. So under the four-year universities, we have the California State Universities, which are the CSUs, the University of California, which are our UCs. We have private colleges, and we also have our California Community Colleges. So for the California State University, which are our CSUs, there are 23 campuses here in California. Um, the requirements, we have those A through G requirements that Ms. Garcia went over in the previous sli slides. Um, you need a 2.5 academic GPA or higher. If you don't have that 2.5 academic GPA and you have between a 2.0 and a 2.49, um, supplemental factors will be considered. Um, as of now um, and moving forward, the SATs and ACTs are optional. So the CSUs don't require students to take the SATs and ACTs anymore. Um, the CSUs offer bachelor degrees, which are four-year degrees, and master degrees, which are two-year degrees. So for the UCs, which are University of California, again, the requirements are kind of sim are similar to the CSUs. You need those A through G requirements. Um, for the UCs, you need a 3.0 academic GPA or higher. Um, they ask about extracurricular activities and you have some essays you have to uh, complete, which are your personal insight questions. Um, again, as the CSUs, the SATs and ACTs are optional now. So they don't take that into consideration when students are applying. They offer bachelor's and master's degrees. They also offer law, medical and doctoral degrees. So for private and independent colleges, there are 82 here in California. Um, most of them will require a similar A through G coursework. Some may require the SAT or ACT. It's best that your student does their research and goes on to the private and independent colleges they're looking into their school website to see exactly what those requirements are. Um, and a lot of them require essays and letters of recommendation. Again, to best know, if what the school's requiring, it, you need a, the students need to look at those individual websites. They offer bachelor's and master's degrees, law, medical, and doctoral degrees as well. For out-of-state colleges, there are around 3,400 plus campuses. Um, for the requirements, most of them require similar A through G coursework. They may require SAT or ACT test. Again, it's very important that the student looks at the college website so that they can have an idea of what those requirements are. For out-of-state colleges and private and, private and independent colleges, um, that's gonna be one of the big things they should be doing is checking their website just to see what those requirements are. Um, and there are some benefits to applying to out of state. So there's a higher admit rate, they're less impacted. Um, there's a higher four year completion rates. There's more scholarships offered for out of state colleges. And there's a program called the WUI program. That's the Western Undergraduate Ex Exchange Program. There's 16 Western states that participate in this. So let's talk a little bit about the SATs and ACTs. Again, as of 2022, SAT and ACTs will not be utilized for the UCs and CSUs. Um, meaning if your student takes it and doesn't wanna report their test scores, that's totally fine. If they don't take the test, that's fine as well because the UCs and CSUs are not um, looking at the test scores. However, when it comes to the private colleges, the independent colleges and the out-of-state schools, it's all gonna depend on those schools if they are looking at the SAT, ACT scores. So just on this slide, we have the websites where you can sign up to take the test, the cost and the 
dates the tests are available. So just like a little side note, colleges usually want to, don't want to see your scores no later than December as the test date. So after December, they usually don't look at those scores. So for California community colleges, there's 114 here in California. Your requirements, you just have to be 18 years old or have a high school diploma. Then you just apply and register for classes. They offer transfer options to UC, CSUs, and other colleges. They have associate's degrees. Um, those are your two-year degrees. They have vocational training, training, and they have certificate programs. So also community colleges offer this thing called the 4CD or FT3, that's first time, full time free tuition. So it's a promise that you sign up for. So to do this, you just need to be a first time college student. You need to complete the FT3 promise program application, complete a minimum of 12 units semester um, with a GPA of a 2.0 or higher, be a California resident, complete the FAFSA or CA Dream Act application. Um, and once you enroll, you complete all these things, you will receive a refund of your enrollment fees for your first two years. This is really good for those students who are going to community college. Um, this is very beneficial. We highly encourage our students to sign up for this if they're doing that two year route. So for community colleges, um, you can start applying in the spring of 2023. Um, this is the two websites you can use to apply for community colleges. It's a common application most campuses use. Um, English and math placement are based on multiple measures. So they will sometimes they'll look at your transcript to see what math you took in high school. And that will kind of be where you're placed or you, you can take the assessment test. Um, you need to apply for financial aid even if you are going to community college because um, you can still get financial aid for that and there are scholarships for students going to community college. There's, like I said, there's so many community colleges in California. It's, we encourage our students to explore many campuses outside of the area if they still want to feel like they're going to a new location for college and they're sticking to community college. Um, that's still a good option for them because there's a more than 100 community colleges. So another option for our students is the military of the United States. These are all our branches. Um, we always have reps come out to talk about what they offer. They offer scholarships, they have programs, they pay for education. So this is another option for our students. So this is a slide about FAFSA and the California Dream Act. So students won't do this application till their senior year. Um, but in case you're unfamiliar, FAFSA, it's a free, a free application for federal student aid. Um, it's a baseline application for all students aid. It determines the eligibility for grants, work study, parent, um, parent and student note loans. So this is for our students to get free money for college. Um, so we highly encourage our students to apply for the FAFSA. Um, this is, so the criteria for FAFSA, you have to be a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident. Um, if you are not a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident, you will fill out the California Dream Act. So it's similar to the FAFSA, but again, it's for our students who do not have a social security number or have one form completed or have, yeah, have one form completed, uh, the DACA or visa. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Naviance. So Naviance is our college readiness platform. Um, the counseling department uses, utilizes this with our students. It helps students discover their interests, learn about potential majors and careers, explore enrichment and scholarship opportunities. Um, this is how they prepare for the college application process. When they are seniors, Naviance is what they will use to apply to the colleges. So we, for schools that use the Common App, they match their common app to Naviance, or they put like if they're applying to any CSUs, they will add all that to their Naviance um, account. And then we're able to submit transcripts and other necessary documents, such as letters of recs, school reports, um, 
their transcripts. So everything is going to be sent through Naviance. So we want them to get ready and start using this platform and being familiar with it. So when senior year comes, they know what they're doing. So we have a task for our 11th graders. Um, we want them to do college exploration so they could use the super match, they could use the research, they can research individual colleges, they can search colleges by major and career path. And on Naviance, there's a little button that says, that allows them to like, like these colleges so they're in their list. And then when they come become 12th graders, they'll move them from their list that colleges they like to colleges I'm applying to. So again, all colleges must be listed in their Naviance. Um, counselors will send their transcripts using Naviance and their letter of recs will be done through Naviance. And we're able to track their college applications as well as they're able to see their college applications and what's been sent and what's not. Um, some other cool features about Naviance is that's where we have our college rep visits. So students are allowed to sign up to attend these college rep visits through Naviance. They could use the scholarship database to look up scholarships and apply for those. And then there's a survey that we call the brag sheet that they fill out and it gives us information that they can, that we can use when we're writing their letters of recs and teachers have access to this as well. So when teachers are writing their letters of recommendations, um, they could reference that student's brag sheet. So, when, when it comes time for summer and our juniors are getting ready to become seniors, this is what we want them to focus on. We want them to continue to research colleges, continue to visit colleges or attend virtual sessions. Um, this is a good time to start writing or pre-writing their essays if they know what schools they're gonna apply to. And then make a college list, have a list of what college you're thinking about joining or attending. Um, and then just we always encourage our students to continue their academic rigor when they become seniors. Thank you everybody again for coming. So now we're gonna open it up for questions. Ms. Garcia, we can't hear you. <laughs> the chat questions as well, because it looked like um, our other counselor had some technical difficulties logging in. So she was not able to answer in the, or no, she was. Do you guys want to answer in the chat? Okay. All right. So if anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself and we can answer them as well. Hi, good evening. My name is Cash. Um, I have two students at, uh, at the high school and my son is currently a junior. Uh, I had a few questions. One, starting with the UC, you said that there were some extracurricular activities that's also the UC takes into consideration. Could you elaborate a little bit on what those extracurricular activities might be? Do you want me to take this? Sure, Ms. Coleman. <laughs> so an extracurricular activity could really be anything for some students, it's babysitting siblings, or maybe they have a job to help the family or just to earn, you know, money for the family. Maybe they tutor, they could be in a sport. Um, some kids are really into community service. It doesn't have to be everything. It just has to be something in their area of interest, hopefully. So with, uh, with my son and his interest in uh, working in the computer science major, what type of experience would I be possibly trying to expose him to, to education for UC? Well, students in computer science may join um, related clubs. They may be creating their own games. Um, there's some camps and classes at community colleges they can engage in and lots of other places as well for computer science. So it just depends. I would just have your son check in with their counselor and we can talk about different options. Great. I'll have him do that. Uh, the uh, other question I had was 
um, in relation to, I believe, uh, schoolology and um, what's the other system? They power use power school. 